that was today. We looked at the four pillars of ability in the future. We looked at science fiction and why we don't have the cars we dreamt of. We looked at cars and girls. We did look at cars and girls, but we also heard them. And we talked to them and we learned to love. And we learned to love them and respect them. We looked at cars in the movies and we just chose the best car in the movies ever. And that was the... DeLorean. DeLorean, there is Somebody was paying attention. This is awesome. And now, guys, ladies and gentlemen, Myself, Shazad, Sheikh, and my colleague over here, Bishan Diada, we are from Motoring Middle East. We have been running these 26 shows here at the Ignition Live Stage at the White Show. Thank you so much. We are, in fact, car journalists. That's our day job. Thank you so much, Dialect Tapavella. Quick, one final wave to your adoring fans. We are, in fact, car journalists. This is our day job. That's what we actually do. We review cars, we write about cars, we test cars, we give our opinion on cars. A lot of people say to us, you guys have the best job in the world. I don't know about that. We're going to find out. And also, we're going to tell you how you could get into the game, how you could be a car journalist. And to do that, not me, not me, but other people, you know what, because you don't want to hear what I really think about it. But we've got other people here. So we have, can I please invite onto the stage my good friend and arch rival, <laughs> Jamie Reed, <laughs> a very experienced motorsport and motorsport journalist. He's been doing this for as long as me. I think he's been longer, in fact. And the former the editor. Yeah, count the years this <laughs> Former the editor of Autocar, he was editor of Autocar Middle East, and I was editor of Car Middle East, and uh, yeah, we had a few blows. We were fierce rivals back in those days. <laughs> hard, hard called motoring journalists. Hard called motoring journalists. So David, please have a seat. Great to have you with us. We also, and okay, you may be thinking, we got a couple of old fogies on the stage, we got a couple of old guys, what are they going to see, sir? I'll tell you what, let's bring some fresh blood in. Let's bring in Abdullah Jaffrey, the multimedia car journalist, with the Kansas Business. Whoa, whoa, give him some love. Come on, give him some love. He's a great dude. He writes about cars, he photographs cars, he makes videos on cars, and if you've been watching that ridiculous video that's been playing in the background here, he's even acts in adverts for the Dubai Motor Show. Nice kick, dude. I don't know how you got that one. I don't know who thought you were pretty enough to be in an advert. But anyway, moving on, we've also got a journalist who is no longer a journalist. So he's done that. He saw the light. He saw the light and he found an escape route. And I please invite onto the stage Ronald Barlow, former locomotive journalist, who's now Mr. Dunford and his PR and comp guy, Ashton Ramones. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. These are my three esteemed guests, and I'm going to shut up now and let them tell you how to be a motion journalist. But you know what? First of all, let's break it down. Let's define. What exactly is an automotive journalist? I think it's only fitting that we start with you, David. Well, um, it's it's you know what the way I describe it is it's it's the only it's the only person in the media game, the only journalist in the media game who can write about every topic in society and get away with it. Because motor journalism, people tend to think that it's just about road testing cars and re reviewing new cars, but quite the opposite. I and mean, there is that, and that fits into one section. But it's the, only, the motor journalist is the only person out of all journalists in, in, in the trade who can write about politics, news, finance, weekend, sport, the whole lot, because the car covers every facet of that area. So you do a car launch and you might uh, talk about the new car, but then you might talk about a new factory that's opening or closing, you might talk about government policy that changes imports and exports, you talk about the motor racing. So it's probably the most broadest topic you can get, and yet it's the most specialised one at the same time. By the way, actually that, that is a definition that went above any other definition, but that's really cool. Ronald, how would you define a motor journalist? And hang on, I, have you got your automotive journalist hat on or your PR hat on? <laughs> that one on the swivel. Basically, in my view, get away, I've got to get this close. Uh, okay, in my view, there's three same things that an automotive journalist or a journalist does. There's one, offer information, two, facts, three, uh, opinion, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's asked for it. And uh, all of these three have to be you know, underlined by objectivity, uh, most importantly. So uh, you give your readers and your audience uh, what they want, uh, you know, be factual, be correct, and if they ask you for your opinion, you give them, you give them to them. So that's basically what I think about it. 
and Abdullah, what do you reckon? What do motor journalists, what is it, what are they, what do they do? We get to drive cool cars. You get to drive cool cars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, brand new cars that just come out that we've always seen on the internet uh, when we were young and then growing up, oh, I wish I could drive this one. Well, may mostly maybe if you can uh, can't afford the car, but then we get the car for a few days, which is cool. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's tricky because it differentiates between uh, automotive journalists who go to friends, go online, do videos, or etc. So on, on radio shows. Uh, we could either drive the car, express how we how we feel about the car, like in a video, and uh, uh, but then when you have print, it, it kind of limits you. But then it's limitation in terms of audience. So to be an automotive journalist, you need to be flexible in terms of who views your your content, and you need to give people who want to read your stuff but know more about your stuff what they need to know or what they can't know or what they don't see in cars. Very good. I think that's a very good explanation. You're, you're getting widened it a little bit. For myself, I would say an automotive journalist or any journalist is a good communicator. That's what we're about. We're about communicating. Now, how many people out there want to be automotive journalists? <laughs> <laughs> so, why do you want to be an automotive journalist? Love of cars. That's it. And what do you think you have to do as an automotive journalist? I mean, start uh, with one friend. Research about them, write about them on website, blog, Instagram, Facebook, and you just continue. Do you think it's a dream job? Sure. And sir, why do you want to be a journalist? Well, I'm really into cars. Let's be serious about school. I've had a thing for cars for a long time, and I really want to be into So when I found out about journalism, I started looking into it. It's a really good uh, field to open up that. So writing is also a really good question. Again, do you think it's a dream job? Okay, Who else wants to be an automotive journalist? Not me. We have one The reason I like to be a motoring journalist is I feel that it's the first step towards becoming an influencer. So this is what I'm He's opening a whole can of worms right there. Okay, guys, I want to... I want to... I the watch right out here right now. I want to answer that question first of all. Is it a dream job? There's people out there who think it's a dream job. Is it a dream job? Jamie? Absolutely, absolutely. It has to be because you give your life to it. You, you don't have really much choice. If you're following motorsport as well, but so you're, you're giving up weekends. Um, but of course, that's what we get into it. You, you wouldn't, you know, when I was looking to, to employ journalists, my first priority is to find out how, how enthusiastic and passionate they were. And that to me was more important than their grasp of the language. And that came later. So yeah, it's extremely important. I'm not going to ask you, I'm coming back to you. I'm going to ask Abdullah, is it a dream job? Of course, yeah, definitely. Like, Make yourself comfortable, by the way. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Yeah, thanks. Just um, press the furniture, it's the last show, do what you like. Put shoes on it, it's okay. It's the last day, right? It's the last show? Okay. Do what you like, put it on this side. Um, is it a dream job? It is a dream job. Um, actually, I realized it's, it's like a reality check at some point. So, one day I was in uh, Norway driving the new, uh, brand new Range Rover Velar. This is the conversation is... the car journalists have. You know, the other day I was in south of France driving the Rolls Royce Phantom, you know. So, Sucks, doesn't it, really? As, as good as it sounds, but then when you're suddenly driving in the mountains of Norway, driving a brand new car that just got released, and you're the only one in the world driving it at this moment, and then looking back like three, four years away, like five years back, for, in my case, uh, I would never imagine that I'll be doing that at one point in my life. It's, it's amazing, it's a dream job. It is so it is a dream come true. Now Ronald, you obviously don't think it's a dream job because you stopped doing it. <laughs> well, uh, I have to, you know, I've had the fortune to see both sides of the equation, maybe even three sides of the equation. I was, uh, I was the audience when I was younger. Uh, I became the writer, uh, the journalist. I did the dream and trips and experiences with cars, I've driven cars at over 300 kilometers per hour and some of the greatest tracks. Oh look, he's posing now, he's yeah. trying off. He's like, how fast have you been? This is the other but, conversation that but, journalists have. But most importantly, and now I'm on this side, but you need to be very focused on one thing, is your audience, right? You said, yeah, we, we, we get that, you know, this privilege to do all these yeah. things, the dream stuff, the dream trips, but if you're not going to communicate that dreaminess of it, that special privilege you get to your readers, there's no point in doing this. So yeah, is it a dream job? Absolutely. Do you get dream one on a lifetime experiences? Absolutely. But if you forget who you're doing it for, uh, then you might not be doing it in the first place. So, That's a very good point, very good point. Who was um, <laughs> kind of worms right there. Uh, we're talking about how to be a car. Oh, okay, okay. Zlatko, Zlatko Mullah Begovic. 
from, from Top Performance Magazine would like to make a serious comment. Can you bring him up here? Uh, no need to get up here, but uh, I think you guys only look at the bright side of the, of the job, right? So, fulfilling your dreams of driving the supercars is Very good job. Uh, but is it tiring? Is it exhausting? Is it hard? Is it well paid? Is it what you really want to do all the time? This is in chapter two. Can I, can I answer? I was not going to ask that. Go for it. Go, go, go. Why not? First for Ronald, and then you. Oh, a young guy goes first. All right. Uh, depends why you're doing it, and depends where you're doing it for, and who's telling you to do it. I think that's these are one of the main things that uh, would make you love what you're doing, or uh, give you a reason to do what you're doing. The way I see it, it's not. Is it the easiest job in the world? One of, I think, especially if you're passionate about it. Uh, it's, and you're good at writing, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, is it the best job to have? Not really. Uh, the pay is not great. Uh, the, the market, the landscape right now is the hardest it's ever been. Uh, so that's shrinking. So I have, I feel for everybody because I've been in it. Uh, so uh, I don't think it's the easiest time for uh, this industry. Uh, it's still fun though, I'm sure, when, when you go and you practice your passion and you do what you love. But you have to always be aware of one thing. If you need to stay relevant to the audience. If the audience is not doing what you want, it's not reading, it's not where you are, then you have to consider seriously, are you doing it for the right reasons? And if you're still doing it for the correct reason, which is to inform your audience, you have to go look for that audience, and you have to go do and, and do it in a way they want to hear it in. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult. It's not as uh, high paying as it used to be. But if you do it the right way, I, I think it still be fulfilling. David, Robert just said it's not as high paying as it used to be. Did it ever, was it ever high paying? Not really, no. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, but it, it's, it's, it's more of a vocation than, 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 a, than a job. It's something you have to live for and you have to, to go through it. Um, when I first got into it, my first boss, he said to me after about two days, he said, he said to me, uh, you're not just in this for the for the travel, are you? And I said, what travel? Yeah. Is it travel? I didn't know. Uh, for me, it was just 100% about the cars. But as I've since found out, there's an enormous amount of travel that, that takes around. Now, that it has its good and its bad sides. You know, everyone says you, you go to a lot of countries. You know, what did you what did you do and see there? Well, you generally see a hotel room, a car, and, and, and an airplane, and that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's in and out in 24 hours. And a USB stick. <laughs> and the USB stick, and, that, and that's the way it is. So it, it, it is very tiring, and you have to be committed to it because then, if you're on a daily, you've got those deadlines immediately, or, or, or online, you've got the immediate deadlines. You're working extremely long hours. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about what it takes to be a car journalist. Some people in the audience earlier put their hands up when I said, "Who wants to be a car journalist? Do you still want to be a car journalist?" I used to. I just said, "My dear, wants to be a car journalist." What do you imagine a car journalist does? What percentage of the job is actually, as the gentleman imagines, driving around cars all day? Honestly, uh, if you're looking at say, okay, if you're looking at locally, you, you, it's, it's, a fair, it's a fair percentage. But if you're going to, to uh, for instance, a motor show, then you won't drive the car at all. Uh, but if you're if you're going to a an international launch. There's literally been situations, not unusual, where you'll, you'll fly um, up to 14, 15 hours, get off the plane, go straight into a car. You might do three hours behind the wheel of the car, and then you have dinner or whatever and go straight back to the airport. So it, it actually makes a very small percentage. The other parts of it, obviously, is you, 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 when you spend time with, with management and executives, you get those interviews, you get that chat, uh, and you find out how their operations run if you're visiting their factory, for instance, and, and their headquarters. So the actual car park, not... It's not the majority, put it that way. Abdullah? Well, it's, it's different from uh, where, where the car journalists are from, or where they're staying, or where they're writing for. I think uh, automotive journalists uh, have a way more effect in uh, what they say on the manufacturer. If they were, for example, in the US, if they were writing one uh, a car that they saw something wrong with, the manufacturer actually takes that. And write it down. Like we need to fix this, or we need to work it out. They actually listen to the manufacturer, to the journalist, to actually know his thoughts because he's seen so many cars and driven so many. And here, it's it's uh, it's cool. We do get to drive cars. I, I I get to drive cars because I also do photography at the same time. So when I create content for the for the car, well, that's what I want to touch on because you know people tend to think 
And people say to me, Doug, oh, Scott, all you do is drive around cool cars all the time. Now, you do a lot, you do photography, you do video, and as you and I both know, that takes up a ton of time. So what percentage of time do you think you're driving, what percentage you're writing, and what percentage you're doing photography and video? Well, the cool thing is that I can kind of combine photography with driving, so when I get to drive the car, I actually go somewhere far, so I can get to drive the car up to, for example, Gemma Chase. I go to Gemma Chase, it's an hour drive. Gemma Chase is a beautiful road where you can actually do some dynamic driving and being safe. It's a great place, the car max is great, and the, the scenery is beautiful, so I get to do photography. Uh, I drive around, I stop, I do photography, it takes, for example, if I leave the house by, uh, if I get the car late night, I don't do anything, of course, in the morning I head off at 8 a.m., I come back maybe 5 p.m., that's a whole day, but then the rest is all up to uh, writing the content, uh, editing the, the photos, or doing a video, which takes even longer, yeah. so uh, I think it's, when we take cars, we drive it for three days. Three to four days, that's... Do you that's feel it. that as a multimedia, essentially you're a multimedia journalist, do you, do you feel that the pressure uh, is more on you, that your workload is heavier per car? I mean, you're producing content in video form, in audio form, in uh, photographic form, and in written form. Well, there's that pressure, and then there's the pressure where you... Uh, depends on the car, where you don't want to crash the car. <laughs> yes. You need to look after it, right? Exactly, like yeah. a very expensive car. Exactly, yeah. So it's one of the parts that, of being an automotive journalist. Yeah. Okay, you love cars? You have passion to cars, you need to actually love cars and take care of them. Uh, so there is all of that combined that takes all, your, all, all of your time and that puts so much things on your mind. How many people out there imagine that we borrow cars and then we just do burnouts everywhere? Quite a lot. Including some people from TR. <laughs> the reality is, as Abdullah said, we have to be very careful with these things sometimes. These are not rentals, these are cars that then have to be passed on to other journalists. Who usually know who the car came from? <laughs> I'd like to add. I'd like to add something. Uh, first six years, I worked as a car, as a freelance car journalist. I didn't drive a car. All I did were uh, historic pieces, research pieces, stories about certain models that probably don't exist anymore. Um, and then I wrote a lot about motorsports. You know, I didn't go to the rallies. I didn't go to the F1 races. So I watched them on TV, and I did like these little reviews on them. So for a long time, I got paid. I never laid my hand on the car, you know, to be honest with you. So it's not just about driving the car. The reviewing is one thing. Being a journalist is a multi-dimensional uh, kind of job where it's not just about at the news. Basically, you get car news every day. So when you have a magazine, a website, a blog, or whatever, it's not just about the reviews. It's about the news of the industry as well. So it's either you're a car reviewer and that's all you do, or you're an actual industry journalist where you go into, let's say, a massive issue that has happened in the industry. It could be um, something with a bit of a negative light, or it could be something with a super, like, new innovation. It's not just about driving the car, it's also about commenting on the industry and providing value to your readers and information, so that when they do buy a car, they know what the safety feature uh, has taken to develop. Uh, when they do buy into a brand, what's the history of the brand? When they do buy a certain car, how long has it been around, and so on and so forth. So. Try to add value to your audience as much as possible. It's not just about driving or burning out or you know going at max speed or whatnot. That's just like the fun bit of the job. There's a lot more than he does a lot of, and you know a lot of you guys do a lot of. That's not just about the product, but it's more, it's, it's more about the industry, and that's where you are at um, that multi-layered value to your readership. Did you want to come in on that, David? Yeah, I think uh, just to, touching on what you said just just a moment ago, I think there's. there's there's probably more pressure for, for motoring journalists in this region than there are in, in, in other regions such as the UK, the United States or, or Australia because the, 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 the access to vehicles here is not as great as are in other parts. So, and so, so in, 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 a, in other established markets, there are dedicated press fleets that are, that are quite fast. When I first came here, every press car that we borrowed was effectively a car off the showroom floor and it needed to be sold. So. Obviously, the, the pressure on you to, to return the car in absolute pristine condition was, was paramount. Uh, sometimes you get a phone call saying, can we have it back now? We've just sold it. But also, the, the amount of time you get with the car is less than it is in, in other markets. So it's you know, three days, four days, whereas in other markets, it's a week or two weeks. And then to, to throw on top of all that is that this region is probably the, 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 the fastest uptake of, of uh, digital and social media than anywhere else in the world. So the pressure on journalists here to not just churn out uh, written word, but to also do the video, do the photography and everything else. It's probably greater in this region 
with fewer resources than it is in the established markets. It's interesting that you're saying that because whilst you're saying that, our friend of Philadelphia over there is actually what, you're Instagramming or Insta-storying the microphone? <laughs> and you're doing that whilst you're in the conference. I have but, to. But that's the pressure of creating content. That's what we do all the time. So what I want to ask uh, again, I'll, go, I'll start with you, Dylan. What kind of person should do this job? Considering that you're sitting up there answering questions, thinking about what you're going to say, but also doing social media at the same time. Well, like you said, it's um, it's about generations, and uh, it depends on, on people. Now, this is the generation of internet media, so it's not just about what you create in terms of, of words, but then it's also, it also can include social media, videography, and, and uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, it's, it's all in the boat. Um, it's kind of hard because there's a lot of aspects to it, isn't it? Yeah. But I think that if you took down the fundamentals of it, Ronald, what do you think? The fundamentals, the core requirements of an individual to get into this, into this field, to do what we do. Well, number one is passion. Passion for doing it, because as David alluded to, it's, it's a bit of a vocation because it doesn't really pay that well. Uh, second, you need to have the thirst for knowledge, because if you're doing it just because you're a fanboy, it doesn't really work. You can't really last long. Uh, you won't be able to bring substance to whatever work you do. Uh, and if you're biased, that works against you in the long term. And you, being objective is, is pretty much one of the most important things you have in this industry. You're gonna have to, like, you might have your preference on brand, car, type of car, etc. But you need to be able to sh project that objectivity when you're writing, when you're showing someone uh, what you're doing. Even if you're enjoying what you're doing. Let's say you're in a fast car and crack a smile. I'm not saying, you know, be stern all the time. You know, you have to be genuine when it comes to that emotional aspect of the story. But again, passion is very important. Objectivity, ability to project objectivity is very important. And to be. Uh, careful with the facts. You could easily, uh, a lot of work, you know, having been on the other side right now for three years, a lot of work goes into what we do, whether from engineering to product to marketing, etc. And if you step up as a journalist, who you are, you know, you should be, uh, you know, fact police number one. If you treat the fact loosely and you start saying the wrong things in the vehicle, you might damage a lot of people's heart earnest yeah. work, you know? Yeah. So there's a responsibility factor as well in what you do. Because once you commit to print or online, nothing dies on the internet, it's yeah. always there. That misinformation proliferates, so you have to be responsible. It's not just about the fun factor, yeah. it's not just about going sideways, yeah. it's not about zero to 60 or drag yeah. races. It's really your responsibility is to give correct information uh, and objective, and you want to do it subjectively, you can do that, it's fine. But uh, at least be you know clear and concise about it. I want uh, Abdullah wants to get in on this. Um, what Ronald mentioned is it's actually knowledge. You need to have knowledge about cars and know what you're talking about. And that's just, it's not just reading the brochure because anyone can just go and go to the showroom, grab the brochure, and know exactly what they want to know. And uh, unfortunately, what we see today, being called an automotive journalist, you only state facts, and that's it's, that's really not doing your job right. Uh, and about being biased and not biased, I think an automotive journalist should be and shouldn't be biased at the same time. Uh, it's a part of your character at the end of the day. So we're, we're, all car, we're all car guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we have we love cars. That's yeah. why we're doing it. You have your own kind of car. Dear has his own kind of car. Ronald has uh, Chevrolet. <laughs> <laughs> nice play. Nice good play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for example, I'm biased because uh, I'm biased to the Nissan Skyline, which everybody knows, because I grew up actually learning more about cars because of the Skyline. It got me into the car world these big round lights in the back. Yeah. But then at one point, I realized that I can't just belong to this car. Yeah. I was always defending it. I still do because it has a sentimental value for me. But then I can, I know that there are many cars out there that can outperform it yeah. and in every aspect. So, so one of the things that is very important, I think one of the channels of highlighting is that the responsibility that we have to our readers because buying a car, as is often said, is your second biggest purchase after buying a house. So it's our job and our responsibility to not just give you our view of the thing, but also to give you the pertinent facts and information to help you make an informed decision about your car. So ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to be a car journalist, how to get into car journalism, what you need to know, what you need to do. Now one of the other things I want to just ask our guests is that myself, I've been a car journalist, but I've also been a journalist. 
I've covered you know, political stuff, I've covered events, I've covered banking, I've covered finance, I've covered other stuff. You know, I've written stories, I've done lots of other stuff in addition to voting journalists, which is majority of what I've done, but I've done other stuff. So my question, David, is are you, should you be more a media person or should you be more a car person in order to do this job? Ideally, you should be a, a, a well-rounded media person. So, uh, and, and also have, have cars as your, as, your, as your passion and you can commentate on that and, and cover it. But as I said before, it covers every facet of what you're talking about. So, for instance, when I started, I, I, I came in as a as a 18 year old motoring journalist with a newspaper, and I was very fortunate to get a, a cadetship that was specialised in motoring. But the proviso on that, because the, the guy wanted me to sort of be his helping hand, the proviso on that was I still had to go through the the, 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 the police roundsmen and chasing fire engines in the middle of the night, doing court recordings. So you learned the graph. You learned the graph. So yeah. you went through the whole thing of that, and that gives you an amazing grounding because you know then how to how to write a story correctly, yeah. how to write a story short, concisely, yeah. know the laws, um, and then it, then it comes back in. So when you when you do sit down with the CEO of a car company and you might be talking about something that's very very lush and pushy, a nice car. But if there's an issue that, that they're in the media for a particular reason for that week and you can talk about it, if you're a freelancer and you need to sell it to many markets, you might get a great business story out of them because you've spent that time in that business environment. Yeah. So primarily you must be a good journalist yeah. and then you, you can like cars as well. No, I think I, and I actually totally concur with that. I think that anybody that's interested in getting into motoring journalism, get into journalism first. The motoring stuff you know because you're passionate about it. But it's the journalism stuff that you don't know, and you need to learn that on the job. Ronald, do you need to know big words to be a car journalist? <laughs> that's optional. Yes, <laughs> you could have said no. Yeah, that's it. No, just to, just to go back to what you were just saying, uh, I always wanted to be in the car industry when I was a kid. Uh, when I was 15, I remember I was kicked off a gas station because I wasn't old enough to pump gas at the time. And uh, I just wanted to be around cars, wash them, fuel them, fix them, change tires, it doesn't matter. Um, and I always wanted to be an engineer. I couldn't do that for particular reasons. Uh, so when I discovered, you know, after a year in law school, I was a little bit depressed. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I met a car journalist, and then I discovered that there was a way into the car industry uh, through journalism and public relations. This is why I'm a PR person right now, and hopefully uh, a little bit uh, on a global level in the future. So. Um, uh, I got in, I switched to journalism and public relations. I said if I want to do it, I'm going to do it right. So I studied right, uh, did the journalism bit. From there, moved on to PR. Now, in six, seven years now, PR, uh, a little bit more. So, um, yeah, you do it. You have to do the right thing. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to be a winged, be a auto journalist. Uh, you won't go for it, to be honest with you. You might be lucky, you know, but even the greatest guys in the industry that people look up to, uh, you know, be they famous or notorious, uh, they've all had proper journalism training. You know, they're all journalists before they became car journalists, and, uh, and they become great, big, uh, you know, entertainers now these days. So, Abdullah, what, how has working journalist evo uh, journalism rather? How has it evolved? How has it changed? What are the requirements now? Well, I do you have to know Photoshop? Do you have to know video? No, not really. My career, in my case, when I wanted to start my own thing, I actually applied to work with other uh, automotive uh, publishers. And uh, I was picked up like three times by the same guy. And then I actually had my own site open. And that's where I found uh, the need to uh, like to know the requirements of how to create this content. And to write and to do coverage in terms of photos. Uh, videos at some point is not necessarily, but now it's very much needed. Um, you do need you do need Don't you think it's essential now, video? Don't you think that's essential now? It's not yet essential. You can actually create cool content using this. Yeah. Uh, so, which, which unfortunately is now being abused by so-called influencers. Ooh, kind of worms again. Where's that code got now? <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, you need to be educated, you need to be informative, but then to, in order to influence, you need to actually get to the point where you're answering people's questions before they ask them. And that's how you can become an influencer as a journalist, as an utmost journalist. Yeah. I think, and that's what I'm actually focusing on these days. Uh, away from writing, I still do photography because visually it's very nice. Uh, you, you point out the things that are not pointed out. And that so, makes you 
What do you think, uh, and, and I'll like to ask all of you, do you think there are any, for those young people out there that might be wanting to get into it about a gym, are there any specific qualifications they need? Is it more experience or is it actual skill set through qualifications? Well, it's, it's never been this easy to play the game, to be honest with you. Uh, you could have your own blog, you could have your own thing, and there's a lot of guys out there that don't have the necessary journalism training that are doing pretty well. Uh, you can't deny that. Uh, you can have, uh, I know people that never studied video editing that can do some really cool video stuff and then push it on YouTube and, and Instagram and all that. So it, it's never been this easy to make a mark uh, and to put your opinion out there. Um, citizen journalism is being embraced by a lot of uh, people, by a lot of audience, by a lot of readers. And that raw grit of it, you know, is something people say is unfiltered and is more endearing to the audience. So there's nothing against that as long as it's done responsibly. Um, but uh, you know, but, basically, but it's a journalist. Do you mean influencers? Well, anybody's an influencer. <laughs> uh, before you you go on your platform of a journal, of a magazine and influence thousands or millions, depending on how popular your outlet is, uh, you're an influencer within your own home, within your own family, within your own neighborhood, maybe, etc., etc. So. The definition of an influencer is a very generic one. Yeah. Um, today's definition of influencer is social media influencers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these guys. Uh, they do what they do. Uh, as long as they, there's a standard they're held up against, uh, I think it's a healthy part of the, the business. Um, again, it's a journalism versus influencer. A journalist is an influencer by definition. Uh, it's up to, again, I go back to what I said a few minutes ago, it's up to that individual and that outlet or whatever to make themselves relevant to the audience. If the audience is going to that social media influencers, that's he's where they're at, right? Yeah. So uh, instead of bashing them and you know opening that kind of worm, they're not a kind of worm. They're an opportunity. But this works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's move, let's move to Damien as a, if I may, as a veteran journalist. If I oh, may sure. use, if I may use that word, I'm in the same boat. No, right? you can't. <laughs> Do you feel under pressure from the from the advent of these so-called influencers as a proper journalist? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely, because the the scene has changed very quickly, and uh, you know now. Um, so so uh, when I when I started, there were probably uh, you know about a population of 16, 17 million people in, in, in Australia at the time. There were probably twenty motoring journalists yeah. in the whole country. And that That's was incredible it. when you put it that way, right? And so it, it was persistence. It was it was knocking on doors. It was trying to get into newspapers and magazines and doing what you could. Uh, now, obviously, with with, with uh, you know, you can start a website, you can start a blog, you can do whatever, which which is great. I encourage that because it gives you a chance to, to work out whether you really like it, whether you want to go through them. But then it does put the pressure on you when you're getting people who, who are also who are just doing uh, you know photographs and. and, and, and it opens up a whole whole other can of worms of, of, of buying followers and all this sort of thing. Now, sure, there, there is a place for that, but then it does take away, it does eat into your market for, for what you're doing. And, uh, and there are a lot of people who are in it for the wrong reason, too. You know, the wrong reasons? Tell us what are the wrong reasons, David. The easiest one straight up is they all think it's just free cars. Free and cars, yeah. The occasional I see, so I'm going nodding vigorously over there. Have you found this? I mean, and it's all, don't just sit there. I know it's been a long week at the photo <laughs> show. I know it's time. We all want to go home. Like, come on, give okay. me a few minutes. I think they can agree with us. Uh, how many people have approached you and told you, uh, I want to be a journalist? Why? I want to drive cool cars. Happened so many times. Everybody tells us, I want to work with this X publication for your app uh, because they want to. Cook. They want to do what you're doing and drive cool cars. But it, what they don't know is what happens on the other side. It's a huge responsibility, and no one would just give you a car so you can drive it. They're actually expecting something in return. Yeah, but also it's not just cool cars. We have to drive everything. We're not all driving Bugatti well, you, you do. all the time. You, you do. I, me. <laughs> my, no, one I, of my most popular <laughs> reviews on the website, on the YouTube, is a Chevrolet Spark. I'm not saying it's not cool, but it's down to earth, right? <laughs> Spark's very cool. Yeah, I'm just dug a grave for myself. Right? Okay, guys, see you. <laughs> No, definitely. I agree. We, we all have to drive all kind of cars, from the ultimate supercar, hypercar, yeah. uh, to whatever it is. Yeah, to, to, uh, to a very cool uh, front wheel drive and a crossover, a company crossover, which you might not drive, but then you have to drive it because there are, there's a there's a like a percentage of people who 
So you have a responsibility here to give the correct information, be objective about the spark and all its com competitors, and then leave it up to him to make his final decision. So you play a very uh, important role in shaping his opinion of said product, uh, and this is basically what it comes up to. You can drive all the ZL1s and Z06s in the world, right? But you, you make your mark when you convert a guy from a certain product to another based on your uh, unbiased opinion. And I also want to bring into this, and again, maybe Damien, you can come on to this, because people think that, oh, you know what, I've driven this cool car, now I know everything about the, the, that there is to know about cars. But it's not about that, it's about putting cars into context, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Exactly, and, and, and with that also, that brings in everything that we've just been talking about, is you've got to, you've got to weigh up the, the where you sit as a journalist in terms of your, your credibility, your integrity, and also personality and ego and, and the problem that we, that we have with a lot of uh, we, 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 with some um, Instagrammers and is it they're driven by their own personality and their own ego to put it very bluntly and, and it's always about that person and there's a car in the background yeah, right? yeah. so that's not information that you want that's not information that you'll get clicks and likes but that's not going to make you out buy a car so um, You've, you've got to express your opinion, sure, when, when, you, when you're writing copy or presenting a TV segment, you've got to express your opinion. But you've always got to take yourself out of the situation and put, put, the, the, put the, the product put you're discussing the first. So when you talk about like the supercars and things, it's so easy to go on and say, I've driven this and it's amazing and everything else, but you've just got to lift yourself out of that situation. And, uh, and that's a very, very delicate uh, tightrope that you have to walk. So once you get out there, who out there wants to be a motoring journalist? We had a couple of people there. Okay, so do you have, um, when we're coming to the end of this session, do you have any questions for our experts? Uh, I, I want to work, uh, you know, I work with uh, South Shift, if you know South I work for three years with them, and uh, I uh, organized in Sudan, I was in Sudan, organized the classic car show, and I uh, work with a TV show. I came here to Dubai, I to uh, UAE, and I want to make a mark. That was really a comment rather than a question. <laughs> Do you have, Sergeant, any question? No. Do you guys have a question? Uh, so, where do you think the perfect place would be to start journalism? Straight up, um, set up a blog, set up a web, web, web page, uh, and, and getting to that way. I mean, you can start with, with, with Instagram, there's no problem with doing going out and getting out because that, that's a very important part of, of media now, regardless of. of how you look at it, um, but getting to the right writing format. So getting to a blog. So and, and just just post it, see see what the feedback's like, and you'll slowly start to, to build followers and viewers and all that sort of thing. And then, then you've got a portfolio that you can then sort of take around to to the, to the larger digital publishing companies or print publishing companies. But it, you, you can't just knock on a door and say I want to be this because not many people will say that we've got budget for you. But what they will do is if you say, this is my site and this is what I've done, bang, 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 and even if you can't get hold of cars, go and cover some motor racing, go and cover some classic car events on the weekends, things that you can get into and just see. Um, I'd, I'd start in the books, buy old books about cars, read them, buy old magazines, go on websites, old stuff, read about history, the industry, not just about the product. The products change all the time. It's the industry that stays there. So first of all, you know, you know, download as much information as you as you can, so that it can guide you in the future, guide your opinion, uh, guide your thoughts. Your, you know, when you when you when you uh, give it a, an advice or something, it's got to be based based on some type of information. So first of all, inform yourself, and then pick what best you want to do: video, uh, photo, word, text. You know, 
and then uh, make a decision. It's never been as easy as it is today to start something. So, uh, but first of all, you need to be well informed before you do that. I will, I will just add to that though, that it's never been as easy, you're absolutely right, but it's never been as hard to, to actually work in and make the mark there. There's a question here from Ian. You've talked about uh, what it's taken to get to where you are in terms of some of your guys. You've talked about the situation of the media now, you've talked about influences, the change in landscape and everything. What do you think the future is for car journalism? In five, ten years, you know, this gentleman's asking now, what does it take to get into it? The world's changing. Where do you see it going? What do you think it will be like in five, ten years? You're going to have to be more adaptable uh, to every form of media that you can get, that you can focus on what, as you can, because the the way the media is changing, the media is changing as dramatically as the car industry itself, and, and now it's not just a matter of knowing about uh, the cars and the history and everything as a role. I'm saying you must have that, of course, but you also need to obviously know about uh, uh, IT and, and where the future of, of uh, well, that side's going to because the car industry is morphing into a, into an IT game as well, and you've got to be adaptable to un to understand that side of the industry as well, and and just just be as versatile as you possibly can for for, for voice and online and for, for video. Uh, be up to edit is edit video is, is essential. It should be mandatory for anyone who wants to study media if it's not already. Um, and then the words follow. Well, I'd say just follow the audience. Uh, where the audience is going to be. Uh, 10 years ago or 14 years ago when I was in print media, someone told me that Instagram and Facebook are going to take over and you know be where most of the content is going to be. I would have said, nonsense, you know? So you have to keep an open eye and learn from what happened over the past five years. Uh, make sure that you keep you know, your mind open to where things might need and uh, look at for the opportunity. So when new things come up, you know, Snapchat is a good example. Nobody thought Snapchat's going to be where most people are going to be watching their content. So, um, you know, just keep an open eye. Don't say no to technology. Don't say no to trends, and especially trends that you know millions of people follow, because that can easily snowball into uh, the current situation of the status quo. Um, I think I would agree with what what Ronald said. Go where to uh, what the audience wants to see. Uh, in terms of uh, content, I would go with social media. Social media is taking over, it's been taking over for so long. Video is also taking over. And like at one point, uh, there were automotive entertainers versus automotive journalists. Uh, like, for example, Top Gear and then Drive TV. And there are some people who are actually managed to combine both, like Chris Hartz, for example. It's entertaining to see, and then it's, it's very, actually very, very informative. Uh, I think social media is the way you can gain followers, you will keep following your work, keep following what you think, your thoughts, your opinions, and followers don't go away. It's like, it's like the internet, whatever goes on the internet stays there. When you keep building up followers, you will never lose them. As long as you do, as long as you do it right, and you don't do any mistakes. Just one more thing, don't give up on the written text, because finals are back. You know, you never know. <laughs> I don't know you say that, you know, but, you know me and Nishan are both writers. We write our stories, we write our reviews, but then obviously in this digital age we can measure what the response is on that. And as you know, it's not a lot, quite frankly. Whereas we put a video up or we put a picture up and we do get a lot of response. We're so, doing it right now! That, I'm an advocate for the written word because I'm, I've got multiple publishing uh, clients. And uh, in fact, all my clients are, uh, are in the written word. So there's still, there's still room for for uh, the written word in terms of newspapers and magazines. Magazines are morphed, they're changing, they're becoming a, a different style, and it's a different style of writing. Um, but there's definitely still, the, the you know, writing is still, uh, it's gonna be around for an extremely long time. And to be fair, David, I mean, even if you're doing video, even if you're doing another form of it, you still need to write that. You still need to have a way with words. And as I said right at the beginning, Journalism is about being a communicator, it's being a, about being a good communicator, about getting your message across clearly, succinctly, and people can understand it and relate to it. We're about to wrap up here. Are there any more questions in the audience? This is a session about how to be a car journalist. Are there any more questions? Okay, this is your last chance to talk to the experts after this. This is it. Right. Guys, just to wrap up, for each of you, because in this age we've talked about how difficult it is, and then, like I said earlier, difficult to make your mark, and all the pressure and all the fierce competition that's out there in the market. Um, question for same question to each of you. How do you know that you've made it as a car journalist? 
uh, people continuously coming to me and asking me questions about cars. Just converting someone? Yes. Conversion is a very good indicator. Yeah. Uh, and uh, someone coming up to me telling me, like, I want to do this because of you, yeah. that's, a, that's a big measure. But that's more personal and selfish. Uh, I think conversion is still the best one. If you converted someone or changed someone's opinion, because at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do, right? Convince someone to, to like something or to adopt something. So conversion is also one. Yeah, I think that it's, it, and it's the same answer. I think for any journalist, regardless of what, what industry, it's it's recognition. Uh, recognition, someone sort of see your, your, your words and, and it, it's made an impact on what they're doing whether it be into a career or into a, into a car or, or anything else. I think just the, the recognition of people come up saying, I read your stuff, I like it, it's great. That's the biggest buzz of all to have that. Yeah, to be honest, that is, I think one of the greatest things about print was still being able to see your name in print. I think for me, when I first got into it, that was a really big deal. But like you say now, one of the wonderful things, it's been very exhausting, five days, we've been, me and Imtashan, Imtashan, take the camera running, come up on stage for a bit. Imtashan, my, my partner in crime and murdering the Middle East, we've been here for five days, we've been here at the Ignition Live stage, and one of the wonderful things about being here at the murder show is a lot of people have come up to us, and they've expressed that appreciation that you talk of, Damien, about how we've helped them, how we've helped them choose cars, how we've helped them make decisions, and how we've just entertained them. And I think all of us, this is what we do now, we write, we inform, we help, we guide, but also we entertain. We've been entertaining you up here. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I would really like to thank so much Abdullah Jaffrey for his time. There he is right there. He is the star of the Dubai Woman Show. I'd like to thank Robert